this brand new method of working herringbone stitch in the round. Uh, it works a treat, it's an unorthodox method which I think you're going to enjoy learning. It's um, simpler than anything else I've seen actually and the benefits are that you can work a stripe in it without any step or nasty jog. Um, I'll go into showing you how to work stripes later on in, in the same video. So let's get on with the video tutorial. For this project I'm using Freedom Wall by Twise of Stamford. So what you need to do is look for a similar ball band tension and note that in stockingette stitch this uses a 10mm needle. Using 10mm circular needles to begin with cast on 201 stitches in your preferred cast on method and with the working yarn on the right hand side the very first stitch that we cast on slip it over onto the right needle in order that we can slip the last stitch over the first like so and then slip that back over to the left needle and give your yarns a little encouragement to help seal that gap. Next, get your 15mm circular needle and we're going to work the foundation round. So go into the backs of the very first two stitches as if you're going to knit two together through the back of the loop. Whoops. As you can see it's a little bit uh, tricky to begin with. Pull through and only slip off one of those two stitches from the left needle. And we're going to repeat that throughout the entire round until we get to the very last stitch. So try and form your stitch on the main girth of the 15mm needle. Go into the back of those two stitches, slip one stitch off at a time and keep going with that repeat. Through the backs pull through, slip one stitch off at a time now using 10mm needles to cast on and off with helps prevent the edges from curling so it's well worth doing before you go into the project I would recommend doing a tension square if you refer to my written instructions you can, do, you can work to and fro and um, satisfy yourself that the cast on and cast off edges, which will make or break your project really, um, that you're happy with the way it looks. Got a few stitches to go. We're nearly at the end of the foundation round, down to the last two. and then down to the last stitch. I'm going to bring that right needle through and transfer this over onto the left hand side just so that we can then work it with the next stitch. So we've finished with our 10mm circular needle now. All that we need to do is do one final knit two together through the back of the loops and slip that final stitch off. Pull the right needle back through just for a moment in order to get a marker. Anyone that knows me knows that I'm a fan of the homemade marker. I've made a little adjustable marker. All it consists of is um, a piece of crochet 
which I can tie into a bow, but you, by all means use a proper marker. An adjustable one is best. Now I'm also, just for my own benefit, I'd recommend this for beginners, I'm just going to mark the right side with a little stitch like so. That way I know the back from the front. So this foundation row represents a right side row. Now I want you to turn the work. And actually that marker should be on that needle there because we're going to work on the wrong side of the work back all the way around and we're going to, as if to purl two together, pull that through and slip one stitch off at a time and keep going with that repeat. So this would be round one of the main pattern. So slipping one stitch off at a time. This time we're purling two together and we're doing this on the wrong side which I know is unorthodox but it seems to work. So we're at the end of round one. There's my last two stitches, so purl two together, release one of the stitches. So we have one stitch and our marker. I'm going to undo this marker here. And Once you've removed the marker, we're going to do our last purl two together and release one stitch and that will complete round one of the main pattern. I'm going to replace my marker and then I'm going to turn the work ready to work around two. Again just move that over to the other side So round two, the final round of this two row repeat. Again, we're knitting two together through the backs of the loops and releasing one stitch at a time. So the same as the foundation row. Coming to the end of round two, I'm carrying on till I'm left with one stitch. Then I'm going to remove my marker just for a moment. And then I'm going to do my last knit two together through the back of the loops and releasing one stitch. And if my memory serves me right, we need to have the marker on the left needle, don't we? And we can repeat rows one and two. So turn the work. Ready to start a round one. So remember we were purling two together. Yeah, that's the last stitch, that's fine purling two together, releasing one stitch, purling two together, releasing a stitch. Coming to the end of what is around one, keep going in the pattern right up until the marker and with one stitch remaining and the marker next to it, remove the marker and complete 
one last purl two together and release one stitch. Now get your marker and position it on the left needle and I'll show you a round two, a right side row, so turn the work. See this is why the marker here comes in handy because you can associate the right side with working through the back of the loops knitwise, or at least I do anyway. And especially just as you're establishing the work, it's it's just um it's quite reassuring. Right. So ready to complete a round two, just tightening my yarns a little, going through the backs of the loops, slipping one stitch off. Knitting two together through the backs of the loops and slipping one stitch off. So again, work all the way around until the last stitch. Remember that at the end of round two, work to the last stitch. Then remove your marker. Complete one last knit two together through the backs of the loop, releasing one stitch, and then place your marker on the left needle. And keep going and repeat rounds one and two, and come back and join me after we've worked a few more rounds. I thought what I'd like to do is introduce a stripe. So I'm down to my last stitch there. I'm going to undo the marker and do my last knit two together through the back of the loop stitch. Replace your marker and then the next round we'll do will introduce some colour and see what the stripes look like. Turn the work, get your colour. I'm going to go into the next two stitches as if to pull two together. I'm bringing the yarn through and slipping one stitch off. I'm going to Tighten these yarns and do just a single knot for now because that will be adjustable and when I'm satisfied with how it looks I'll double knot it and weave in those loose ends. So I'll do that once I've established a few rows and I can see the fabric. So let's keep going with our repeat in now a new colourway. Down to the last two stitches of round one. Just the same as if we were working the one, you know, the one colour. Remove the marker work final time reposition the marker onto the left needle turn the work and work round two now when I'm going to make these yarns travel up the back of the work, so I'm alternating two rows of pink and then I'll do two rows of blue and I'll alternate the stripes. And instead of snipping off each time, 
I will be ensuring that the yarn naturally travels up by crossing that blue yarn over and then when I work the stitch through the back of the loop it will be trapped. Can you see? So I'm knitting two together through the backs of the loops just as I've already demonstrated in the blue colour. Remove your marker work the last stitch going through the backs of the loops slipping one stitch off replace the marker on the left needle now those two rows form one nice narrow stripe I'm now going to revert to the color blue so I'm now going to work with the blue yarn and do a round one. So that's purling two together and where you've just got a change between the pink and the blue, just, just tease the yarns and pull them in. You don't want sort of big loose gaps at that point. Release the marker. Pearl two together, release a stitch. Reposition the marker on the left needle. Ready for round two of the stripe. I'm just going to lay the pink across the blue and turn the work ready to knit two together through the back of the loops and complete a round two. So we've nearly completed our second stripe. I'm removing the marker. It looks I've got looks like I've got into a bit of a tangle. Do one last knit two together through the back of the loops. Reposition your marker on the left needle. Turn the work and repeat that all over again. I'm going to introduce the pink again, so we're going to repeat rows one and two and notice I've got the blue yarn overlapping the pink and this will help carry the yarns upwards as our work progresses. Using a 10mm needle we're going to begin the bind off. Now the next stitch I am just going to go into the back of it in order to twist it and I'm just going to knit two together and slip one stitch off. I'm going to repeat that again, knit two together, slip one stitch off. When I have two stitches on the right needle I will slip one over the other and repeat that sequence until all your stitches are gone. So knitting two together, slipping, maintaining the pattern at the same time on the right needle, slipping one stitch over the other in order to cast off.